Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this Rubicon Light Armoured Half Track SDKFZ 250-1 new. The back of the box shows the included decal sheet, a basic painting guide, and some information about the vehicle and its use and design history. I'm going to build this model mostly as the kit intends, but I'm going to add this expansion kit to turn it into an SDKFZ 250-8 Schutz and Panzerwagen, which is a pretty sensible name. It's a Panzerwagen that shoots in. The expansion kit can be used to make a few different shooty half tracks, and as you can see on the back of the box, two of those are based on the SDKFZ 251. For those, you do need to use the upper hull supplied in the expansion box, so it's not really something that can be just dropped onto your already completed half tracks, not without some work at least. I may revisit this expansion kit with a 251 half track someday, there will be plenty of parts left over, but I don't have any immediate plans to do this. Enough jibber jabber Herbert, let's look at what's inside the box. In the box for the main kit there are two sprues. As I've come to expect from Rubicon, these are very neat looking and crisply moulded, and there's a fair amount of detail. There's all kinds of parts here, obviously they're all appropriate for the model, I don't mean all kind of random parts if that's what you were thinking. You weren't? Okay then. Anyway, everything on these sprues looks pretty good to me, I couldn't find any errors or blemishes or anything like that. The plastic, particularly on the crew figures, is a little bit shiny, but I don't think that's a problem and it's pretty common with Rubicon's plastic anyway. Unsurprisingly, an instruction booklet is also included. As always with Rubicon's instructions, this is nicely laid out, clear and easy to understand and follow. And of course the decals. This is the same decal sheet that came with the SDKFZ 250 alt I built a while ago, and as I probably said then, there's a decent amount of markings here. Very good. Let's now look at what comes in the expansion kit. There are three sprues in here and they're just as neat and well moulded as the ones in the base kit. Two of those sprues are crew figures. They look decent enough to me though I probably won't be using them myself. I may change my mind when I go to paint the model, but probably not. We'll see. I am assuming the two different crew sprues are for different versions of the Schutz and Panzerwagen that you can build in this expansion. As I mentioned before, the expansion includes two upper hulls for the 251 half track, along with all kinds of bits and pieces like internal details that should make these open topped vehicles look quite nicely detailed on the inside. The expansion does come with instructions, unsurprisingly they're as good as the instructions for the base kit. It's probably kind of obvious and doesn't really need to be said, but definitely pay attention to the instructions. Review them before you start so that you know when you should stop following the base instructions so that you'll be able to add the expansion. The expansion doesn't however come with any decals. Not that you really need any extra decals, there's plenty that are included on the base decal sheet. Ok, let's start building. The first step is to drill some holes. On the interior floor part you are meant to drill out one hole for a passenger seat, but it seems that there are three places that you could drill two of which might be the one. The instructions aren't super clear here, so I took a gamble and drilled the one closest to the edge. You'll see later that I was correct in my guess. Next, the front mudguard parts need some holes drilled as well. On the left hand side, you only need to drill one hole for the boom thing that helps the driver know where the front corner of the vehicle is. On the right side we have the option of drilling two additional holes to mount a pickaxe. I decided to only drill the one hole in the corner for the boom. The fit on the alt version wasn't so great, so I just decided to leave the pickaxe off this time. Of course if you want to add the part, go right ahead. I'm not the pickaxe police, I'm not going to stop you. Next I add the hull side and suspension-y bits. These aren't really keyed, but they are shaped such that they'll lock into the hull at the front if you slide it along while pushing the parts in towards the hull, nothing too tricky here. The instructions say to add the left and right ones at different times, but I'm a rebel so I put them both on at the same time. Same with the side stowage box thingies. These go on pretty easily. To be sure that I've put them on properly I use the upper hull as a guide, making sure there isn't any glue there that will accidentally cause the upper hull to get glued on prematurely. That would be annoying. The one on the left hand side was a little bit more gappy than the right, but it shouldn't be too bad. Next I attach the front mud guards. The instructions say to add the right hand one later, but I don't see it causing an issue to do both now. These go on quite easily. 
you could add details like the booms and headlamps and such at this time, but I think they might be easily bumped and damaged so I put them on later. And I move on to some internal details. There's no avoiding them by adding a roof this time. First I glue in what I'm assuming is a tripod for a machine gun. It slots into the lower set of mounting holes with the angled bit facing towards the front of the hull. Then an MG34, I think, can be glued into the upper mounting holes. Nothing too tricky there, though you may find tweezers useful. I then add the details to the floor part. It turns out that I did choose the correct hole to drill for the chair, so hooray for that. It looks very chair. Next comes a little stowage box that goes on the back of one of the front seats. This is quite easy to get into place, though you do have to eyeball it because there's no keying. Next, this whatever it is goes in between the front seats. This has keying so it more or less just slots right into place. The final part is this big box. I guess it's some kind of locker or something? I have no idea. Whatever it is, it easily sits in the corner of that raised bit like so. And that's the floor insert bit completed. I set that aside for the parts to fully bond, and then add some details to the inside of the upper hull. Starting with this box, whatever it is. It goes onto the mounting nub on the rear door. Then I add this rack of guns. The mounting holes for this are different sizes. These correspond with the rack of guns so that you can be sure that you're adding it facing around the right way. I'm sure these will be convenient if the crew want to jump out and become angry shooty mans. Next comes this dashboard. It mounts into this little slot like so. These controls seem to be for the other front seat and not the driver. Either way, they look neat enough. Hopefully they'll be easy enough to paint. At this point, the instructions say to add part A33, where the forward MG mounts. Don't add this if you want to install the expansion kit. Next, I glue the interior floor assembly in. As you can see, this was very easy to do, and it does look fairly decent. I then attach this steering wheel to the wall part that goes in between the engine and fighting compartments. The steering column has an angle to it to help neatly slot it into place. It was very easy and looks very steery. I set this aside for a bit while the glue sets properly and then I install the fire extinguisher. It goes into this indent in the left rear of the fighting compartment like so. This was a bit fiddly and tweezers were quite a help here. I nudge it into place and it ends up looking fairly decent. Then comes this seat for the crew. I'm not totally sure if this should go in for the model with the gun mounted in the top. The gun probably wouldn't leave a lot of space for the crew to sit here, but it's pretty easy to install anyway. I add an extra bit of glue behind it to make sure it's bonded to the whole sides. There's a little tarp or canvas cover thing that goes over the top of the seat that can also be installed. I guess that's where they hide their chocolate and sauerkraut. I use the upper hull as a guide to make sure that it won't cause any fitting issues later. It's best to be aware of that kind of thing in advance. Then I install the front wall and steering wheelie bit. This sort of just clips into place right here. I add some glue to make sure that it stays there. It looks okay though the steering wheel is a bit wonky looking. Otherwise it's fine. Next, I glue the rear door into place. This is shaped such that it perfectly fits into the recess for it. Very easy, unless you put it on backwards or something, but maybe don't do that. I then attach the front of the engine compartment. You can see it's got some keying on the back of it which makes it slot into place very easily. A little pressure while the glue sets up and everything is fine and dandy. It's now time to glue the upper hull to the lower hull. This isn't too difficult at all. It more or less just drops right into place. I apply pressure to minimise the gaps. The fit isn't absolutely perfect and gap free. I'm not 100% sure but it does look like there should be a slight gap or overhang along the top of the stowage compartment and the engine section. At least when looking at a couple of black and white photos of the actual vehicle. I might fill those in a little bit and try to neaten up the edges a bit but maybe it's fine as it is. For now, I move on to add some of the exterior detail. The stowage box on the right side of the vehicle is pretty easy to install as you can see. As best I can tell, the gaps along the sides of it should be there. On the other side, I install this piece of, I assume, the exhaust system. It was a bit hard to get into the correct position with my fingers, but that's okay. It was super easy to nudge into place with my knife before the glue set. Looks pretty decent. 
At this stage I'm certainly not following the construction order laid out by the instructions, though I am paying close attention to be sure I'm not missing any parts beyond the ones I'm intentionally leaving off. I start on the running gear by installing the front steering axle. This is keyed and clips into place very easily. Looks quite decent. It's not super detailed or anything, but it should look fairly good when you catch a glimpse in there behind the wheels, and that area will be fairly exposed. I then build the track sets. These are pretty much exactly the same as with the 250 Alt kit. You glue in the drive sprocket and then some outer road wheels, which is pretty easy. These track assemblies are then slid onto the axle pin parts on the appropriate area of the lower hull. The drive sprocket should go towards the front of the vehicle. I add pressure to make sure they're all the way on. Looks good. Now it's time for some steering wheels. These are keyed so they go on the axles the right way up. This is to ensure the slightly flattened bit sits at the bottom and makes the model look like it has some weight to it. I sit the model down on the work surface and nudge the wheels until they look right. It's now time for some of the more delicate details, starting with the convoy light. You get a choice between the Notec light that I've used here and a bigger round one. I figure this one looked a bit more interesting, so that's what I used. It was fairly easy to get into place. I then add glue to that little rectangular hole and then I install this headlamp. This is a very tiny fiddly piece and you'll find tweezers a great help. I couldn't even really use my fat thumb to nudge it into place and had to use my knife instead. Next comes the boom thing which goes into the hole I drilled for it earlier. I didn't quite make the hole big enough, so I had to use a bit of force to get the part down and properly mounted. I really should have test fit, but what matters is I got the part into place. I also installed the headlamp and boom on the right side of the vehicle too. The boom here is different in that it doesn't have that disc, whatever it is, but the installation is the same. Then on the rear left I install this, I think smoke launcher box thing? This is pretty easy to get into place, though it is a very tiny part, so obviously you'll need to be careful with it. And then I add the tow bar. Like in the alt kit there are two of these to choose from. I've used the more realistic looking one. The other has a tall pin so that it's practical to use with towed guns and things like that, allowing you to actually connect them to the vehicle for your games of bolt action. And that's pretty much all that needs to be done with the base kit. It looks pretty decent, but I think it's going to look cooler with the 75mm gun installed on top of it, so let's get back to work. These are the parts that'll be needed. I rather like that the gun barrel doesn't need to be drilled out. I start with this little gun shield. It can be slid onto the main part with the gun breech. Obviously it slides onto the other end and not the breech end. I add a bit of glue behind the shield to bond it into place. And then I add some glue in here and slide the business end of the gun into place. It fits pretty easily, though I still apply a little bit of pressure to try and minimise gaps. I then attach that assembly to this lower part, whatever you would call that. There are a couple of pins in the gun part that should clip right in. This allows for a little bit of elevation and depression, and I leave it unglued for the time being. Next I glue an MG34 into this mounting bracket on the side here. It's not too hard to nudge this into place, so that it looks fairly level and isn't leaning off to one side or the other. The gun assembly has a pin on the bottom. That can be slotted into the hole in the bottom part here, whatever you would call it. Not too tricky. I tried to line everything up nice and straight, but a little bit of traverse wouldn't be too bad here. I then added glue to the elevation pivot points and held the part in place so it would be nice and level. Then I installed the gun controls part. It would have been a much smarter idea to install this before putting the outer frame part on, but it wasn't too hard to get into place with tweezers and my knife. Next I add the gunner's sight, or at least that's who I assume it's for. This would have also been much easier without the outer part getting in the way, but I did eventually get it in there, even though I was holding the model out of frame most of the time. Maybe I need to git gut at camera. At any rate, that's the 75mm gun expansion completed. It simply slots into place in the top of the half track. You can see there's a bit of a lip on the bottom of the expansion that should hang over the front of the windshield area of the vehicle. I have not glued this down yet because it would be really hard to paint the inside of the model with the upper part in place. I don't plan to do anything super fancy in there with paint, but I still want it to be easy to get in there and make it look nice. So that's the Rubicon SDKFZ250-8 completed, and I think it's quite nice. 
I don't have any other models of this vehicle to compare this kit with, but I'm sure that it would stand up very well to any other offerings in this scale if indeed they do exist. I think this model looks really cool, and I'm rather glad that I got the expansion for it. I'm sure it looks great as a regular troop carrying half track as well, but I do think the gun makes it look more interesting. Like the Observer version of the 250 New, I don't know how useful this might be in games of bolt action, but surely that gun fires HE and might be useful for pinning infantry or something. Either way, it's yet another option I can consider when building my army lists, and it is an interesting vehicle for my collection, which is a bit more important to me personally. The model looks quite good as I would expect from a Rubicon kit. It's not absolutely perfect, there's a couple of nicks and gaps and stuff in it, but those are really more my fault than anything to do with the quality of the kit. The build was quite enjoyable and while not the quickest thing to put together, it was still fairly quick. It's hard to tell exactly how long it took because I spend a lot of time fiddling with the camera and otherwise being distracted. The parts barely needed any cleanup and everything went together pretty nicely. The only problem I had was being a little bit uncertain about which hole in the floor I should drill out. The instructions just weren't perfectly clear there. Anyway, the result is quite good and well detailed. I think it's a nice representation of an SDK FZ250-8 and it should look excellent on the tabletop, especially after painting. So what do you guys think? Do you like the kit? Is this useful in games of bolt action? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Also, if you feel like it and haven't done so already, why not subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on social media, and watch me live stream on Twitch. And if you really like the things I do, please consider helping to support the channel over at Patreon, or perhaps by purchasing a mug or shirt from my merch store. Links to all of those things are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other and thanks for watching. Farewell.